afternoon, good evening, all of you guys. Uh, I hope you are doing fine in this uh, situation. So today I will uh, present uh, a talk about uh, deep marine seismic uh, geomorphology and sedimentology. As um, Melinda introduced that now I'm a PhD research fellow at uh, Norwegian University of Science and then Technology. So this is also part of my uh, lecture in the uh, master program in the seismic interpretation course. Okay, so uh, just briefly introduce uh, myself. So my name is Diki Haris Hidayat. Uh, I graduated uh, from uh, University of Pembangunan Nasional Veteran Yogyakarta in Indonesia, uh, majoring in uh, geology and uh, I continue to Norway to pursue my uh, master in petroleum geoscience, uh, working in uh, seismic sedimentology. And now uh, I'm in the last stage of my PhD at the same university in Norway. Uh, I have working experience before coming to Norway, uh, mostly in Indonesia. And uh, surprisingly, my ex boss, Pak uh, Firman Yaman, I work with Pak Firman Yaman uh, at uh, Pasir and Puri Petroleum Resources Limited during 20, 2010 until 2012 as an exploration geologist under his uh, guidance. So I'm glad that I met uh, Pak Firman Yaman. Thank you, Pak. <laughs> and uh, I also have uh, uh, geophysics experience as well, especially in the seismic interpretation and uh, CSEM in Norway. It's quite famous. And uh, I'm also working here at the university, uh, mainly teaching and, uh, and uh, student advising for, for, for master student. <clears throat> so uh, I, since I know that uh, you guys have a different background, Geologist, geophysicist, uh, physicist, uh, and, 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 and any other background. So uh, maybe some of you didn't familiar with uh, what is this uh, seismic reflection data. So during the first uh, couple of slides, I will introduce you about the uh, about the seismic reflection data itself before we are going deeper into seismic geomorphology and sedimentology. So. Here is the, there's a video from PGS uh, that uh, how this uh, data is uh, obtained in, in, in marine environment. So just, uh, just have a look. Marine seismic acquisition is a very complicated and highly technical part of the hydrocarbon exploration process. One of the great challenges concerning the exploration for oil and gas is that the subsurface geology of potential interests can be covered by many kilometers of sediment. As we cannot see it with our eyes, we create and record sound waves that are reflected from the geological layer. By producing sound and sending it towards our target, we can record and interpret the reflection of that sound. This gives us a picture of what the subsurface looks like. The sound is produced from compressed air devices turned behind a seismic vessel. The reflection of this sound is recorded by receivers which are housed within seismic streamers. Multiple streamers are towed behind the vessel, with each being many kilometers long. The information that is collected is recorded on the vessel and is then analyzed by geophysicists. With the results, effectively creating a visual representation of the geology below. The key targets are oil and gas accumulations. Technology has enabled these operations to become safer, more efficient, and more precise. This will ensure that marine seismic operations will remain key to future oil and gas exploration. So now you know how this uh, seismic reflection data is acquired. The, this is a marine case. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, after some acquisition and processing, so what is uh, 
the typical seismic reflection that uh, it looks like uh, when it comes to geophysicists, uh, seismic interpreter is uh, is like this. Uh, this is one of the example uh, where you have uh, red and blue colors representing the amplitude. And then this is the explanation of uh, this uh, different color. So basically the red and blue here uh, is representing the interface between two sedimentary layers. We know that uh, every sedimentary layers, they have a special velocity and density that function of the lithology and fluid. So this seismic uh, reflection data is uh, try to image those uh, things into, uh, into an image like this. So in the next, in, in all, on, in, in this lecture, in this, in this talk, you will see a lot of uh, different uh, colors representing the different uh, density and velocity from the sedimentary layers. Just uh, keep in mind. Right, uh, seismic geomorphology. So uh, we know that uh, the 3D seismic reflection data is uh, started during uh, 60s, uh, 70s. Uh, and then after that, uh, Alistair Brown, uh, he has a, a famous book in uh, 3D seismic uh, uh, interpretation. And then now I think they, I think it's now it's, uh, and they have, a, he has a, like a 12th uh, version of this. And then when it comes to seismic geomorphology, uh, it started in 2007. Even before in 2004, uh, there is some uh, special publication in Geological Society of London uh, about the 3D seismic technology, but the specific publication about the seismic geomorphology started in 2007, where uh, Richard Davis, Henry Posament, Leslie Wood, and Joe Cartwright, uh, uh, they make uh, this uh, special publication. And uh, fortunately, I met Henry Posament here at the uh, APGS 2017. Uh, Henry, say salam to you, Pa Firman. <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, I discussed a lot about uh, seismic geomorphology with Henry and uh, and actually, he also uh, came to my poster at the time. <laughs> so this is the the, the, the the fundamental things about the seismic geomorphology in 2007. And uh, to, in 2010, in 2012, uh, SEPM, they also have a dedicated uh, publication and also conference about this seismic geomorphology. And uh, now in 2021, uh, Geological Society of London, they start to was, uh, update this uh, technology, this uh, technique by uh, publishing this uh, special publication on seismic technology. And uh, fortunately, I, also, I, in, I have uh, invited by, by, by them to publish uh, to their uh, special publication. So, just uh, stay tuned on my research uh, social media. Uh, then, I, then I, will, I also will I also will publish the uh, post print version of this into my uh, social media uh, research. If not, you can just send me an email as well. Then I can send to you. So I divided uh, the objective of this talk into three parts. Uh, I know that you guys have a different uh, background, so I try to uh, be as uh, simple as I can to, 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 to explain about uh, this uh, talk. So the first session is about uh, understanding the different terminology, processes, and the products, since we are dealing with uh, sedimentology. And uh, the second uh, part, we will discuss about uh, seismic geomorphology and sedimentology on the deeper in the positional elements. And the last one, uh, we need to understand what is the application of this uh, seismic geomorphology, especially in the deep marine area. So the definition of uh, deep marine, uh, there are two definitions at least. Uh, 
Some people said uh, big water, some people said uh, big margin. So what is the difference? So the difference is that uh, if you talk about uh, deep water, uh, this is from San Mugan uh, and, and, and friends, said that uh, if it is deep water or, or deep marine, refers to batial or water depth. Uh, and then seaward of continental shelf break on the slope and the basin. So, and, 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 and they said that about deep water, it means that it can be uh, deep water in the non-marine area, like for instance in the lacustrine, right? And second uh, terminology from Posamentier and friend, including Kevin Pickering, uh, he has uh, good books also in the uh, deep marine uh, system. So the term of uh, deep water of deep marine refers to the area of the self edge to the basin port. So they didn't count it um, the, 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 the meters, but uh, as long as you are off the self edge to the basin port, that is called uh, deep marine. And also the Emiliano Muti 1992 uh, mentioned about uh, this uh, deep marine uh, or turbidite uh, as, as, their, as, as his, uh, his favorite uh, words is uh, in the deep water environments and it can be both marine or uh, and lacustrine. So, and today the focus is uh, in the deep marine. So we didn't discuss about uh, deep water in the lacustrine area. So it's now it's uh, deep marine and I will put emphasis on this uh, uh, terminology or classification by Osamentir and Walker they, uh, about the uh, deep marine. So from the self edge to the basin port area. Uh, maybe some of you uh, will have a question, how, how is the deep marine looks like? I mean, uh, Sam Mugan said it's uh, below 200 meters. So maybe if you have, if you, if you like uh, diving, I don't know how, how deep you can reach, but uh, there is a good uh, video from uh, Smith Ocean that uh, they, they use a, they, they use a UAV. Uh, they dip into this uh, uh, deep marine area, especially in this uh, canyon system. So we are so now uh, we are in this uh, yes, Australia, and then uh, this uh, ROV is. Uh, they diving, diving into this uh, canyon system here, the Bremer Canyon. So how it looks like, I think we can just jump in to 24. We start to be used to this view here. So this uh, view is the view of uh, ROP and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, viewing this uh, uh, area here. So this is the track of this uh, ROV here. So now this viewing is viewing this uh, canyon wall. So if you see in this uh, canyon system here, you see some uh, very tiny, tiny, uh, maybe, uh, for I mean, fair of plankton. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just have a look to the multi beam map that is accompanying our actual uh, imaging of the seascape here. Um, uh, the, the scale is different, of course. Now, our scale is uh, meter or tens of meter, and, and the map over there is, is the margin here that is including the entire, the entire uh, canyon system that we are, going, we are going to visit during this uh, first part of the expedition. And you see the, the, the escarpment, let's say that Australia is, uh, it would be basically um, the black strip on. <laughs> so actually everything that we, we are seeing it is the underwater topography. The one that we have been reconstructed by using the multi-beam. So if you look at this uh, depth, it's uh, 1,200 uh, meters. And uh, remember that uh, you are in this area, in this deep marine, we are dealing with temperature, salinity, and the pressure. Just uh, keep, 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 on, keep in mind. 
uh, we, we use false colors. So again, you see a cluster of uh, a cesta, the mean that the big, uh, the big uh, clam that we have sampled before in a different context. Okay, now we are getting uh, with a, a better detail to the, uh, the specific uh, area we are looking at. That is the western, the western uh, uh, branch of the Bremer Canyon. That is one of the most relevant features here indenting the uh, southwestern Australian uh, margin. Uh, and Okay, now you see more and more in detail. Now you can see even the, the track of our ROV on the bottom. This very relevant for later exploitation uh, of the data. So if you if you look at uh, this uh, canyon wall and also the, the, the canyon area, I mean, it's quite uh, calm, right? So that's what uh, typically uh, sedimentary process in the deep marine, especially in the self edge canyon, where if there is no sediment source from the self, it's just like this, everything is just calm. And if we are talking about the geological time that we are talking about a million years. So yeah, so you see this escarpment, the V shape or the U shape uh, canyon, that uh, delivered uh, sediment from uh, fluvial and shelf area in the north here, the red uh, color on the bathymetry, and then down to this uh, basin area here. Some fish. <laughs> yeah, so now this is how the, the deep marine looks like, especially in this uh, self uh canyon. It's also the same if you go to the deeper in the basin floor area, I mean, if you don't have any uh, sediment input from the step exterior, self and self edge, so everything is just calm. And what, what you can expect is just uh, suspension uh, of the fine grain material that become uh, a shell later on. Good. So uh, this is from Doric Stone 1985, one of the classification about uh, deep marine processes and products. So uh, as you know, there is uh, several classification in the deep marine. We have uh, Doric Stone, Henry Bosamin here, Donald Low, Mugan. We have Thierry Mulder. So they make all uh, different classification. So it doesn't mean that uh, if I use uh, this classification, it means that the other uh, are wrong, but uh, this is just uh, based on uh, my, my, my study, my study. So for instance, maybe if you work in the continental margin, um, Doric Stow and Hosamenter classification is much more relevant to you. And, but if you work uh, mostly, mo mostly on the uh, slope area, maybe San Mugan is, 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 uh, is uh, suitable for you. So, uh, this classification that I presented here is, 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 is just because of my, uh, my study area. So uh, Doric Stoll, he divided uh, this uh, process and products into at least uh, three uh, main, uh, three important things. So the first one is uh, this one. It's, uh, it's about rockfall, creep, slide, uh, slum. And uh, how this uh, how this the process happens in the deep uh, marine area? This is a, there is a video from Geoscience Australia that uh, explain about this. So just have a look. In this case, uh, it's talk about the tsunami that caused by uh, slides on the self edge. So this is the self edge area, and then where is there is a, there is a slope failure that uh, create this uh, mass movement to the basin floor area, and then it can generate a tsunami. So this is uh, one example. We will discuss uh, this later on the 
application of the seismic geomorphology. So this uh, land, uh, the submarine uh, slides uh, creating the tsunami wave, then reach the onshore area like this, and then you have the tsunami there. Good. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Turbidar. It's quite uh, famous. Uh, how this uh, Turbidar looks like? There is some video here that you can see. The bottom of the ocean, or lakes, or sometimes we have some pools and rivers. Here are showing numerous examples of turbidity currents in laboratory uh, apparatus. This first example is a turbidity current running down a ramp. You can see clearly that the turbulent head, the body, and the tail behind. Seen from the other side, it looks very similar. Once again, you can see the turbulent head, the body behind it, and the very end of the tail. This is the front view with the turbidity current running toward you. This is taken with a GoPro. Here's a turbidity current running again down the same uh, slope. Again, you can see the anatomy of turbidity current. Once again, for a turbidity current running down a ramp, but this time entering into a, an open basin, spreading out in a lobate shape and encountering an obstacle. So you can see that uh, this turbidity current has, uh, at the end, has a uh, lobate shape. So this is also important for the next uh, deposition alignment discussion. And uh, next is uh, contourite or bottom current or sediment waves. So this we know that um, on the deep ocean we also have uh, thermohaline uh, circulation. That if you look at this arrow, that's that's the thermohaline circulation that also bring uh, sediments transported uh, and then deposited. Uh, around this uh, circulation, so it's, it's it's everywhere in the world. So uh, let's move to this is uh, at South Atlantic. Uh, I think we have uh, Antarctica. Yeah, so it's it's everywhere in the world. So this uh, contourite is mainly mainly because of this uh, thermohaline uh, circulation. Good, and uh, when it comes to interpretation of uh, seismic geomorphology and sedimentology, um, I, uh, I always uh, uh, surprised with uh, this uh, APG Memoir 26. It's a basic, basic book about uh, seismic stratigraphy, but also uh, this uh, seismic facies classification by uh, Peter Fell and Fran. I think there is, yeah, and uh, this uh, classification, reflection termination pattern, reflection configuration, that is really important for uh, seismic geomorphology and sedimentology interpretation. So, yeah, I mean, you can see here we have uh, this is reflection termination pattern and this is uh, reflection uh, configuration. So we will see a lot of uh, uh, this seismic phases analysis in the next uh, couple of slides. So that's the first objective. Uh, now you know the terminology, but in Berlin, the process, how the uh, turbidites, contourite, uh, submarine slides looks like, and also the products. So next, uh, we are discussing about uh, seismic geomorphology and sedimentology on the different depositional elements. So this is the depositional elements uh, based on uh, Postamentier and Walker, and also the Rickstock uh, 1985. So this is, in the next couple of slides, we will discuss uh, on, uh, on these uh, depositional elements related to seismic uh, geomorphology and uh, sedimentology. Uh, when I discuss with uh, Pa Henry, uh, I ask him uh, what is the strategy or tips or tricks uh, to become uh, a good uh, seismic geomorphology uh, as, as Pa Henry. And then he said to me that, uh, Dicky, if you want to be a good seismic uh, geomorphologist, you have to see a lot of uh, seismic data 
you have to see different kinds, different case or, or, or different type depositional element from different world. So now uh, I will bring you guys around the world. So I will give you a uh, different uh, example around the world uh, about seismic geomorphology and sedimentology. So uh, keep tight. So uh, now we are uh, discussing about the staging area. Uh, it's located here uh, in the head of the canyon. Uh, this is this this is uh, uh, Henry said this is the self uh, age delta that uh, transport a sediment from uh, terrestrial to the uh, head of the canyon. So now I bring you to the Norwegian Barents Sea where we have uh, this uh, beautiful uh, meandering uh, self edge uh, canyon. This is the head of the canyon. You see some beautiful meandering uh, canyon. And then all this uh, red, uh, orange, and blue is a uh, cross-section on every uh, 250 meters. So to be able to reconstruct the, uh, to, to be able to uh, uh, measure the morphometry uh, analysis. And then this is uh, three example of uh, the red uh, canyon. We have a proximal uh, section here, uh, medial and distal. If you look at the shape, the morphology, the proximal canyon, 1715 is located, this one. So this is a 1715 sec 1750 section. So it's, uh, it's quite uh, narrow compared to the medial and distal, while the distal area, 11,000 11, here, this one, is quite uh, wider compared to the proximal area. So if we plot, so all this uh, point is the, every, every, is the point that I measure every 250 meters along the canyon from proximal to the distal. This is uh, sinuosity and the slope gradient every uh, 250 meters, again in the proximal, medial, and distal. If you look at the, this is the depth bit uh, versus uh, down canyon distance. From here, you can see that uh, we have uh, increasing in the depth. All, all the canyon uh, is increasing in the depth. There is some uh, undulating here because of the fault activity. And uh, how about the width? Width of the canyon. So, uh, so the, the the solid line is uh, width uh, base uh, base width of the canyon, and uh, the dash line is a top width of the canyon. You can see we have uh, general trend is uh, increasing, but uh, there is some also uh, undulating uh, curve like 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 this one because of the fault activity. And uh, this is cross-sectional area in 2D, um, kilometer square. It's also the same. We have the increasing in the depth. Uh, and also we have uh, some undulating uh, in, in, in this uh, area here. So the, the, the increasing, the general trend uh, in increasing number of uh, this uh, canyon is, uh, is tells you about the, how the turbidity current or gravity flow it's uh, shaping this canyon in the several several phases. So now I bring you to West Africa. This is a publication by Job uh, Zen Job at Colorado School of Mines. So this is uh, in Equator Equatorial Guinea, where he mapped this uh, beautiful uh, bathymetry data. And then there is one example here. So this is the canyon. This is proximal and this is a distal. So this uh, section is this one here. So in this case, you see that uh, you have a, what's it called as high amplitude reflector that uh, represented a coarse material compared to this uh, conformable reflection elements that uh, more, more representing the suspension of uh, fine grain material. Uh, now I bring you to New Zealand, offshore New Zealand in the Great South uh, Basin. 
uh, where we have this uh, shelf edge uh, delta. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I for the for my for the publication for my publication, uh, you can get it uh, from my ResearchGate profile. So just googling my name, then you can go to my ResearchGate profile. Then you can download uh, my publication uh, for free. So this is a Great South Basin in the New Zealand. Uh, in this case, uh, this uh, self S delta is also dealing with the prograding clinoform. Uh, if you look at uh, here, this also this is the clinoform in the in the in the, in, in the self edge. So this uh, clinoform here, we have a one, two, three clinoform, uh, is uh, is dealing with also with self edge delta, and this is the basin floor area here in the east. So. If, if you can see in this uh, clinal form default development, uh, we have uh, some high isolated amplitude that uh, this one, if you look at this red and blue, remember the interface of uh, sedimentary layers. So this is, uh, we have isolated uh, bright amplitude uh, that represented uh, channels. So if you look at this, that's, this is the channels from this uh, time slice from kernel from one, kernel from two, kernel from three. So as I mentioned before, the bright uh, isolated amplitude that is uh, the channels. And if you look at this here in this area here, we see uh, channels uh, that uh, become uh, gully in this uh, self age area here. And uh, this is how the section one of the planar form uh, look like looks like. So again, you see you have a bright uh, amplitude, isolated bright amplitude that uh, represented uh, uh, channels. And uh, now uh, we talk about uh, gully. This is uh, we are go this is from Berensi, Norwegian Berensi. Uh, this is one of my uh, PhD project. So in this case, we are dealing with uh, a gully. So uh, I, 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 add the, uh, uh, I add this gully into Pusamin tier model since uh, there is no gully here. So gully was usually located here in this uh, selfage. And if you look at the uh, morphology here, the gully is uh, usually uh, straight like this and with uh, uh, similar uh, width and depth uh, uh, down gully distance. So uh, this is a, a cross plot between uh, depth and uh, gully distance. Well, we are uh, in the proximal, medial, and distal. Again, this is uh, sinuosity and the gradient, slope gradient of uh, of this area. So if you, uh, of course, we are increasing in the depth, but if you look at the width, if you remember comparing to a canyon where we have very uh, uh, undulating curve, but now in this gully, in the gully, the width is more or less the same. I mean, there is no significant uh, changing in the gully. There is some significant changing here uh, in this uh, red uh, gully is because of uh, we have a slides or, 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 or mass movement inside the galley. But uh, overall, more or less the same. So it means that we have a less variation in width and depth and general trend is increasing. So now I bring you to offshore Gabon, uh, West Africa, where uh, Lydia Lonergan and uh, Fran from Imperial College uh, map this uh, galley uh, in the South Age. So this is this is a uh, shelf area. This is uh, the age, and you have a uh, lot of uh, gully. You look if you look at this, uh, it's what well, it's, it's a uh, uniform, more or less uniform uh, in the width and the also on the on the, on the uh, height as well. So if you look at this section here, how it's uh, how the seismic looks like. So it looks looks like this. This is the bathymetry data, yeah. So uh, we are need to look at uh, in this interval. So you have uh, uh, a several, uh, 
uh, you have an uh, undulating system like this, and usually it's a V shape uh, undulating with uh, uniform in the in, in width compared to the one in the canyon. Yeah. So now uh, we are here now in the slum scars. Uh, so it's close to the uh, self edge. Uh, now I bring you again to the Norwegian Barents Sea. Uh, where we have this uh, example of these uh, slum scars. So in this case, this is uh, Matthew. Uh, this is a deep, deep uh, angle degree. So if you look at uh, this uh, cross section, you see that uh, you have a very wide uh, incision compared to the canyon. And uh, yeah, look at that self edge and the, since the slum scars is creating a depression, uh, so the, the depression, so this, this is slum scar is uh, because of uh, a slope of failure of the long short drift. And uh, after that, uh, since this is slum scar or slide scars uh, providing, uh, creating a depression, then this depression is acting as a conveyor or a conduit for the sediment from the shelf in this area to transport the sediment from shelf to the basin floor area. <clears throat> and uh, this is the three section from uh, proxy, uh, as we can see obviously that uh, if you look at here, from proximal to distal, we are uh, increasing in the width, both in the top width and the base width of this uh, slide scar or slump scar. And uh, this is the scaling relationship on the morphometry analysis that I did. Uh, uh, and we can see in the slump scar, the, uh, of course, it's, uh, it, the, the number is increasing uh, down a slight distance, but uh, there might be some uh, anomaly here on the width uh, like this one is uh, because of the uh, fault uh, activity. And uh, now we are talking about, we are going deeper uh, in this uh, channel system. Now I'll bring you to uh, Eastern Mediterranean Sea, where uh, I have a pro offshore uh, Israel to look at uh, the seismic geomorphology on the channel system. This is uh, bathymetry data uh, offshore Israel, Israel. You can see beautiful uh, uh, channels here. You can see clearly here. And also some of the channels is correspond to this uh, mass transport uh, complex. And then we have this uh, slide scar here. And also we have uh, several canyon system here in this uh, northern part of uh, Israel, or I think it's, now it's, I think this is in Lebanon, I think, yeah. So uh, this is the shelf, the, uh, yeah, onshore area that, uh, that uh, supply, supplying uh, uh, sediment to this uh, deforming system here. And this is uh, one of the example of uh, 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 channel system in this area. This is a time slice of the seismic. You see some beautiful uh, meandering channel. Uh, also uh, influencing by this uh, fault system here. And uh, this is an uh, example of, uh, now we, can, we zoom in into the system. So you see this uh, beautiful meandering uh, channel here and also we have uh, this fault that uh, influencing this uh, channel system and now we make we, we zooming uh, into the seismic section so this is uh, uh, two example of a seismic section so if you look at this uh, this uh, panel here we have uh, high amplitude uh, isolated uh, channel system. This is coming from this uh, section here. So we have uh, one, two, three. So it's one, two, three uh, channels system. 
that has a lateral uh, aversion. The solid species movement. And uh, in this uh, system, we have uh, also it's the same. We have an incision of the channels. One, two, three channels. And this one is the same channels, actually. So we can see uh, incision of the channels and uh, and uh, isolated uh, filling uh, deposit of the channels. So if you remember the uh, gravity flow uh, video, you have a head uh, body of the that you have a head and a tail. Uh, so you. Probably usually this uh, channel is, uh, is part of that uh, processes. So now uh, I give you one another example of a channel system. This is from uh, India, offshore India. Uh, this is from Kola 2012, uh, where we map I think this is one of the best uh, Mandarin channels has been mapped. Uh, so we can see here. This is uh, one of the cross section uh, crossing that uh, channels. You see, uh, you ha you have a chaotic, what, what chaotic or disrupted, uh, bright and uh, amplitude uh, uh, anomaly here, and then it's surrounded by uh, look, look, surrounded by low amplitude continuous uh, reflector that representing a uh, settlement of uh, uh, fine grain material and uh, there is some uh, slice here that uh, you see here was beautiful uh, meandering channel here this is a uh, slice four so it's uh, here so it's crossing all this uh, canyon uh, sorry, all these channel so in the big scale uh, this uh, channel system is located in one big uh, the, uh, one big incision, right? So it's uh, what you call as a uh, confined uh, channels. So the channels is uh, developed inside this uh, big incision. So then you can see this uh, beautiful um, uh, meandering uh, channel here. The the bright color here representing uh, sandy material, while the uh, low amplitude is representing the uh, fine material. So the nature of sinusity is due to the channel aggradation and lateral migration. Uh, this is also another example from slice number five, which is here. So it's a deeper, a slicing deeper is crossing this uh, package as well. Still, we see some beautiful uh, meandering channels, beautiful meandering uh, deep marine channels, and. Uh, the, you see that uh, the development of the channels has uh, quite uh, sharp aggradational. This is due to mostly this, uh, because of the weekly depositing to the currents in the channels. And the wide channel courses are not due to the channel as flow, but due to the overbank fields. Uh, next, I bring you to New Zealand, where we have a uh, uh, a unique uh, channel system that influencing by this uh, volcanic uh, activity. So this is uh, Kora volcano. If you if you if you heard, if you know about this, so this is in the uh, offshore New Zealand in the Taranaki Basin, where you have this uh, volcanic uh, buried uh, in this depth that uh, also in uh, giving a sediment. Uh, to, and transported to the to, to, to the deep basin to this uh, area here. So in the, if you look at this, we, uh, the deposition of sediment is uh, is a filling by this uh, clinoform system going to these directions. And uh, also we have this uh, VMTD, means the volcanic uh, mass transport deposit. So this is the VMTD. So all these. Uh, and uh, depositional element in this uh, deeper system, MTD, and these uh, deeper channels are influencing by this uh, volcano and then creating a volcanic plastic system. And this is a time slice from uh, this interval here. Oops, this interval. 
So this is the Cora volcano. And look, if you look at the, to the side, you see some beautiful uh, meandering channel as well that uh, has this uh, volcanic plastic uh, influence. Next, I bring you to Bahama, uh, Eastern Flora, Florida, offshore Florida, that uh, we have, uh, this is the grid, uh, this is the Bahama Bank. And then this is a bathymetry uh, data, then you can see that we have uh, some escarpment coming from this uh, reef to this uh, basin floor area here. And uh, another unique thing you know, is also that uh, we see uh, in this area here, the system tend to bending to this uh, direction because remember we have the current, the Atlantic uh, current going like, going like this. And uh, now we are zoom into this uh, area here where we see some uh, beautiful channels as well. And this is a section from these uh, two lines. So in this case, uh, the source area is very close to the, uh, the system. So you can see in the cross section here, you have mostly is a, is a V-shaped uh, incision. It means that uh, it, 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 it tells you about the, uh, the, the process of this, of this incision. So it means that uh, mostly is uh, close to the uh, system, close to the source area. Where, 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 you go, where, when it is wider, you are more distal, and then uh, it's the it's experience uh, more longer uh, process. And now we also have a good example where we have a mix between carbonate and uh, silicic plastic. Uh, this is example from uh, Indonesia, from uh, Makassar Strait. Uh, where we have, uh, this is the bathymetry uh, uh, data, and then now we are going to this area here where we have this uh, canyon uh, channels um, MTB in this area. So, so the this uh, is uh, influencing by longshore uh, drift current that uh, transported the sediment from the Mahakam Delta into this area here. And also we have some small uh, river coming in into this uh, area as well. So this is uh, how uh, it looks like. This is the bathymetry data. So you see we have a uh, carbonate shelf margin here. And also we have this uh, loss and uh, delta as well. So those two things are, uh, are, are, are the are the uh, source of the sediments and then it's it's bring uh, and, and this canyon system canyon channel system are bringing the sediment from this uh, proximal area to the depositional area here down in the basin floor uh, and there is some cross section here a b c d that uh, we can have a look so in this a uh, cross section this one here still we have a, a v shape uh like this while in the b this one the, 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 the canyon system is getting uh, wider remember this is uh, in the middle area and also um, maybe we can go to this uh d here this d so there is some if you look at the d here you is it's, it's correspond to this uh meandering uh, channel here so that's also that's why you have uh, this kind of uh, stack uh, system going on. Good, and uh, now there is also some uh, good example that uh, we have a canyon channels loops in one uh, seismic data. This time is from uh, Santos Basin offshore offshore Brazil. So in this case, uh, we have a very beautiful. Uh, Canyon channels uh, lobe system here. So we have a canyon system, and uh, the yellow or red is in for a sandy deposit, and uh, whitish is in for a muddy deposit. So 
this uh, system is uh, transporting the sediment from this uh, beach ridge complex here and then transported the sediment to become uh, channels and loops. look at this uh, big uh, loops here and if you look at this uh, cross section here uh, remember that uh, these loops is also uh, stacked by uh, channel system so if you if you look at this we have a bright isolated amplitude that represented to uh, single loops or, or or single channels <coughs> While you also have uh, this uh, white yeah. the loop system that uh, represent the uh, fine grain material because of the suspension. And then uh, cross section here in the proximal area where you have uh, this uh, canyon uh, system. Uh, this one is uh, this area here in the middle where you have uh, this canyon system and uh, these uh, bright things here that uh, representing this uh, gravel lag in at the base of this uh, canyon system and the last one is here this uh, section here uh, still you see you see uh, you have some incision here and also here incision. Good, and now I'll Gian Barency, where we have also these beautiful uh, loops or frontal splay, splay uh, as uh, Pa Henry uh, has in, the, in his uh, terminology. So this is a deep marine channel that also correspond to this uh, frontal plate or, or loops. And uh, again, this uh, bright amplitude here is uh, representing the, the descending material, while the background here is representing the uh, fine material. And uh, you all fa you are familiar with uh, these things, and this is how it looks like. So this is a uh, horizon slice from this uh, seismic cube. So if you look at this uh, frontal splay here, it's always correspond to look at this uh, section. It's always correspond to this uh, bright amplitude and uh, isolated bright. Always correspond to bright isolated bright isolated amplitude. And it's surrounded by this uh, low uh, massive amplitude represented a fine grain deposit of the suspension. And if you look at this area here where we have this uh, incision, and this is the shelf, and this is the incision that transported the sediment from the shelf to the basin floor area here. And since uh, this uh, shelf are building a uh, uh, basin wall, uh, into the into make, make into the propagation uh, system like this, and this is the same case, but now we are going um, more into the channel system. Is is this is also has the uh, same response? So all these uh, channels, this one, this one, this one, and this one, are correspond to this uh, isolated bright amplitude that surrounded by a uh, low massive amplitude that represent the suspension uh, of, of the fine grain deposits. And this is the scale, the one kilometer scale. But, uh, I also want to give you another example of the loops from the Norwegian North Sea, where this is uh, quite a famous uh, field called uh, Frick Field. And then if you look at this uh, red, uh, color that this is represented a uh, gas field and the uh, area of this red color is representing the lobes uh, dimension this one so uh, this lobes is also uh, uh, stuck with uh, uh, submarine channel system so stack between uh, lobes and channels, lobes and channels, and it's, it's, it's uh, prograding to the north-east uh, north, uh, uh, direction to this area here. 
and then we have the two orientation of the of the uh, sediment pathway one is from to the north and the other one is to the east because of the represent uh, because it's a, because it has a different uh, paleotopography and again the high amplitude the bright amplitude isolated uh, is representing this uh, sandy deposit and and if you look at this blue line here, the north-south blue line that uh, crossing the wells, the, and this is the seismic uh, section of it. And uh, this uh, map is uh, is a zone slice from this interval, and you can see here uh, on the seismic section that you have uh, isolated uh, bright amplitude, and sometimes you can see some uh, on this uh, area here that representing the channels and loops uh, system. Next is about uh, mass transport complex or mass transport uh, deposit. Uh, now I bring you to the New Zealand, again in the Great South Basin, uh, this uh, tribute tube, where we have this, uh, you see this uh, uh, rounded and blocky things that this uh, remnant block of this uh, mass uh, transport deposit. So we have this canyon system here, we have a slope here, and then we have a slope failure that created this uh, remnant block. And this is cross-section on this uh, figure 8A, this uh, zigzag things here, <coughs> that's showing you how this uh, MTD looks like on the seismic section. And this MTD is also correspond to the channel's incision at the upper interval. And uh, if you look at this blue arrow, this MTD is also uh, correspond to the uh, bottom current that uh, has a current from this uh, west to the east that also shaping this uh, mass transport uh, deposit area to become more elongated like this. And this mass wasting is triggered by over steeper margins uh, with dissipation and weak geological layers. Yes, and I said before, MPD is translated over the slope, eroded by this uh, bottom current or uh, drips. Another example from uh, mass transport complex and MTD, again, this is from uh, offshore Florida, where we have this beautiful uh, recent mass transport uh, complex that also uh, together with this uh, beautiful gully system. And uh, if you look at this, this is the cross section from east to the west. So this, uh, you see, this is this this uh, slide scar uh, here. Uh, this one, this is the slide scar is located, and this is all this uh, mass uh, transport uh, complex. And this is a, a example of the seismic section going like this from east to the west, where you have. Uh, these uh, chaotic, uh, sometimes you have this big block, uh, isolated bright amplitude that uh, represent this uh, mass transport complex. And regarding this MTC, uh, I also want to, what want to inform you that uh, uh, one of my colleague in our group, Haria, will also present uh, this uh, mass transport complex in the 5th of May. So it's, it's free. You can just go to this uh, eatme UK uh, LinkedIn to, 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 to have the uh, invitation link. And my other colleague, Henry, he also uh, it's a webinar. Uh, it's also uh, talking about seismic geomorphology. Uh, even more uh, brought into the distal planets in Mars. I think I, 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 I attended the, uh, Professor Wood uh, webinar here, or seminar here on the Sedimentology Congress last year. So I also encourage you guys to also attending this uh, two session. And also, you can also follow our uh, research group uh, update in this uh, research kit uh, profile. Next is about uh, contourites. So, uh, as you remember, we have a thermohaline circulation, and uh, this uh, and it, it is it's uh, when we have the contourites deposit. Now I bring you to again to New Zealand, 
uh, Grid South Basin, uh, where we have this uh, contour right uh, case. So this is uh, some uh, horizons uh, in the in the in the deeper part that uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, Antarctic circumpolar uh, uh, cir uh, circulation from south to the north, so from south to the north like this, that also uh, influencing the sedimentary system in this uh, basin floor area here. And then there is a cross-section here, uh, this one, that we can see how this contourite looks like. So in this case, this uh, contourite here this one is also uh, is also uh, stacked with this uh, mounded here at uh, the orientation. It's uh, it's in the in the south north uh, south uh, south north direction. So we can also uh, infer this uh, uh, bottom current flow directions uh, by looking at the internal uh, seismic reflection uh, uh, progradation. And this is the interpretation of this uh, seismic section. Another beautiful example from, of contourites is coming from uh, Emiliano Muti uh, from offshore Brazil here. That uh, they uh, map this. Uh, this is a time, uh, horizon slice from uh, this offshore Brazil, and uh, and also fortunately there is a well one well here. Uh, that uh, drill until this uh, contour. Right? So, if I can briefly explain, uh, this is the shelf area, or uh, sorry, this is the upper slope area. This is the basin floor area, and then this is uh, their interpretation. So we have the dash uh, red uh, line here is the uh, channels, intra-slope channels, and we also have this uh, submarine uh, lobes here. But then you have a uh, uh, current, this uh, blue blue arrow, that's a bottom current in uh, this direction that create a beautiful uh, contourites in the different type of contourites. So it's uh, the, the, the feature, the contourite feature is uh, Barchan, June, sand wave, and sand ribbons. And it's, it's beautiful because uh, I, I think um, and, and Muti said that this is the first time uh, that uh, they found this uh, different uh, type of contourites. And let's have a look the section that crossing uh, this well here. So this is the seismic section. This is the wells here, and then you see you have a white and black uh, colors very bright compared to the others. Again, uh, the low amplitude uh, in the background that uh, representing the uh, uh, suspension of the fine grain material in, in deep marine system, while this uh, bright amplitude here is representing the uh, sandy material. And look at this, it's, the bright is, is also isolated, so that's a good sign for uh, send the, the positional element. And yes, we have a uh, low relief sand drifts and isolated uh, sand bodies, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, this is the wells that penetrate that uh, sand bodies. And it's uh, 8.2 uh, meters and it's, uh, and it's oil reservoir. So this also now it's becoming, uh, Famous uh, to have this uh, contourite as, uh, as 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 a reservoir. I know in Indonesia long time. I, I read the paper long time ago that uh, in the, in the northeast Java Basin, uh, Pertamina. I think they tried to drill this uh, contourite uh, in nineties or something. So. Yeah, uh, now we have uh, finished this uh, two uh, objective. So now the last one, uh, what is the application of uh, this uh, uh, deeper in uh, seismic geomorphology? So you, you I, I'm sure you know about this poster. It's published by the Geological Society of London, uh, where they try to map the, the the role of geo geoscience 
in 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 the sus, uh, sustainable development goals of United Nations. So, you know the oil price uh, today and the uh, situation in the petroleum industry, uh, and I think it is is nice if we also need to 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 broad our 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 knowledge um, into other things, right? So. So since now we are focusing on the deep marine, so now I bring you to these uh, three things about the what is the application of 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 this uh, deep marine seismic geomorphology. So uh, based on this poster, they mentioned that we have this oceanography that's also dealing with this uh, wind farm, uh, hydrocarbon, of course, and also this uh, storage energy storage. Uh, I think I put one uh, example also about the geohazards. Petroleum, yeah, of course, uh, we have discussing a lot uh, that we have uh, sandy, we have uh, shale, that uh, from all these uh, depositional elements that directly can inform you about where is your reservoir, where is your source rock, where is the seal, where is the trap. And when it comes to the system, to stratigraphy, then um, the publication by Fail, Peter Fail, 87, for Simon Tier and Alan 99, uh, will, will help you to, to, to locate it. Where is your reservoir source of uh, seal in, in the stratigraphy? But uh, in terms of uh, seismic geomorphology itself, so you know that uh, you have a sandy, you have a shell. Environment, uh, yeah, uh, recently uh, Ian Kane from Manchester and Michael from uh, uh, Oceanography, the Southampton Oceanography, uh, last year they, he, they published about the, what is the, the relation between this uh, deep marine uh, process with the uh, transported of the plastic. So that's, that's the Imagine if you have an uh, industry here in the in the terrestrial area, and then you have a marine environment. And I think you 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 saw the video that uh, someone found a plastic bottle in the middle of the sea in the middle of the sea, right? So, so this guy they they, they try to look at the, where is the possibility to have uh, plastic is deposited in the deep marine in the deep marine environment. So, one example. They mentioned that uh, accumulation, uh, preferential accumulation, is on the levy of the offer spilling flow of the channel system here, and uh, also uh, in this is from it is on this uh, contourite system. There are also prefer preferential accumulation on this uh, contourite system here. Geohazard. Yes, uh, this is from uh, Makassar Strait uh, from Indonesia. There is a new publication here uh, that uh, uh, they, they try to look at the MTD, the mass or mass of transport complex, uh, to, 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 to map the possibility to have a geohazard in this area. And we know that uh, in Indonesia, in, uh, in this uh, Palu area here. We have a lot of uh, seismicity here, and uh, they try to map. And then, if you look at this uh, cross section, east uh, west east cross section, you have this uh, MTD that uh, really close to the seabed. And uh, imagine if uh, you have a seismicity that can trigger this uh, MTD, or you can even even more, you can have a new slope failure in this uh, proximal, in the south edge. Then uh, remember this uh, tsunami video that I showed before, then you have, a, you, you will probably have a tsunami, right? Good, uh, that we have, uh, we covered all these uh, three objectives on this uh, talk. And uh, so in, in conclusion, I could say that uh, Seismic geomorphology is playing an important role in understanding the sedimentary process, uh, sedimentary uh, infill history, interaction with uh, other things, with the tectonic, uh, with other things, and also the temporal organization and 
and and and we see from the application it has a wider implication for geoscience uh, disciplines and uh, uh, if you i mentioned about the seismic phases analysis i didn't explain uh, in detail of, of in this uh, talk so if you need more explanation about that about the seismic basic seismic phases analysis i have i have uh, recorded my lecture uh, about this uh, seismic phases analysis and other things on, 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 on my YouTube channel. So you can also go to my YouTube channel to, to, look, at, uh, to, to look at my, my, my lecture. Thank you. Okay, Mas Diki, thank you very much. Uh, this one is an interesting presentation. Uh, we get some insights on the deep water. And okay, uh, we have four questions. Maybe uh, you might turn on your audio for Mas Ramadan Ibnu. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss yeah. Moderator. So, uh, Assalamualaikum and good evening, Mr. Diki Hardi Sidayat. Hari Sidayat. Okay, uh, it's been an honor to me, sir, for asking you directly. So, my name is Samadai Ibnu Asim. Uh, I'm from... Uh, University of Malaysia Kelantan and I'm a final year student. Okay. Uh, my major is geoscience. So uh, I have uh, several questions regarding the seismic uh, sedimentology and geomorphology. My first question is, uh, can you compare uh, bio assumption and approach between the seismic uh, between the seismic stratigraphy and seismic sedimentology because uh, I reckon that this is the between the stratigraphy and sedimentology seismic is the same kind of thing but the difference is just because of the, the scale of the basin and the scale of reservoir and my second question is uh, uh, have you ever heard about the seismic ghost before sir? Yeah. Uh, is it possible that seismic ghosts can shown on the three-dimensional geomorphological sense from 2D seismic data based on your previous slide before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all for me. Thank you, Mas Ramadan. Mas, uh, you can ask me Yeah, boleh Mas. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Mas Ramadan. Yeah. Uh, so the different, you said in the first question, uh, what is the difference between seismic stratigraphy? And you put uh, specific things about seismic sedimentology. Yeah. So uh, as you know that uh, now uh, seismic sedimentology, it's uh, different uh, because uh, in terms of in term of the in term of the technique is different. Because uh, in the seismic stratigraphy, you mostly dealing with uh, seismic reflection termination, seismic reflection forms. But uh, and to, to be able to do that, you just make a, a slicing or cross, a cross cross section. Then you have you have it. But in seismic sedimentology, that is different. Uh, there is a professor from UT Austin called Hong Liu Zhang that uh, invented the seismic sedimentology and. Uh, he mentioned, I met uh, uh, Hong Yu Zhang in the sedimentology conference last year in Rome and he, and, uh, he, he mentioned that uh, there is uh, three things in, seismic, in, in the seismic sedimentology. First is about the uh, 90 degree facing, uh, sorry this is, my, this is more geophysics now. So first is about the 90 degree facing, so you need to uh, turn your uh, seismic face into the 90 degree facing to be able to put your interface into the in, 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 to be able to put your interface to be placed at the at the sediment at the real uh, sedimentary layer interface. The second one uh, it's about the uh, seismic lithology. So in the seismic sedimentology, you need to also achieve the seismic lithology, which is you need to do some uh, inversion, at least uh, doing the 
to have a lithology in your seismic. If you if you if you if you get my presentation, I mostly using uh, inferred terminology or related uh, terminology to mention if it is a sand or if it is a shell. But in seismic sedimentology, uh, in the second point of seismic sedimentology, the seismic lithology, it means that you need to be have you need to have you need to be sure where is your sand and where is your shell. In 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 more detail, uh, the seismic lithology can help you to lo look at the, the porosity itself. And the uh, last one, the third uh, point about the seismic uh, sedimentology is the uh, slicing methods. So you have a horizon slice, you have a time slice, and you have a zone slice. So that is the difference. And the seismic stratigraphy is founded by Peter Fell and friends uh, by, uh, uh, in 1977, so it's, it's quite old compared to the seismic sedimentology. And uh, to be honest, there is, uh, there is some uh, debate on the seismic sedimentology. Uh, perspective and some researchers said why don't we why don't you call just seismic geomorphology but uh, Hong Liu Zhang said that no this is different because uh, those three things in 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 in, in seismic uh, sedimentology and about the okay. ghost yeah. do you have any comments sorry sir uh, is that clear uh, can, do you have any comments or I can continue to the next question. Your question, the next your question. Oh, okay, okay, it's okay, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, so regarding the ghost from uh, to the seismic, yeah, it it is yeah. possible to. But then again, uh, if you, I mean, if you have a grip to the seismic, that will help you instead of only one line parallel or one two lines. That that is possible. Yeah. So, is it relate? To seismic geomorphology, uh, the ghost. Yes. No. Uh, yeah, you can relate it to be able to help you to 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 see the geomorphology because if your depositional element is uh, higher than your seismic resolution, for sure you can see the morphology like 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 the canyon that I saw on my slides. We have the V shape. We have the U shape. For sure, you can you can you can trace uh, this morphology by by the ghost, but oh, again, okay. but, but 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 again, you need to have the uh, morphometry uh, influence, morphometry knowledge, mm -hmm. on the on the how you how you will map this canyon by the ghost from proximal to the distal. If you look at my cross plot, the scaling relationship, yeah, uh -huh, yeah uh -huh. that will help you. Okay, okay. Be because you, because. Because at least you have a if 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 uh, so if you don't have the uh, idea about the morphometry morphometric element uh -huh. in your area, you can use an analog. So for instance, you uh, you are dealing in the south edge area where you have a canyon from your two D seismic section, and then you can use analog from from Balancy, from other area that has a similar system, just to have the trend of the depth, for instance, or the trend of the width along the slope for instance and then you can use that uh, function and then to apply in your area so, the, so it so, could be an so it could be an effective to remove the ghost method right yes yes okay okay mm -hmm. i see i see thank you sir thank you so much no problem you're welcome okay uh, thank you mas ramadan so we are moving on to the second questions from mas raditya perdana you might turn on your audio. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Raditya Perdana. I'm from uh, Universitas Tanjungpura in Pontianak. So uh, my background is uh, geophysics. So uh, I'm intrigued by what you said before about uh, Turbidit. Uh, you said it was uh, very famous, right? Uh, so uh, uh, I'm interested to know uh, what makes uh, Turbidit is a uh, very famous like uh, like uh, what's the importance of uh, turkey type uh, so uh, that's uh, my question okay thank you thank you mas traditia uh, uh, 
I know some of the sedimentologists they they will argue that uh, they they would like to call gravity gravity flow gravity flow or gravity deposit. But uh, when I said that, that this could be that because of this um, Emiliano Muti and uh, Boma se Boma sequence, maybe you heard about it. It's uh, they they found this uh, turbidite terminology from long time ago, while we are still uh, debating the, the terminology for the exact process. So now, I mean, so that's so that's so that's why turbidite is uh, is more famous because then if you talk about the hybrid bat or something, it's it's much more uh, specific. But uh, when it, when it comes to turbidites, I think everyone knows about the turbidite and also. Is it also uh, related to the, to, to the other terminology in the turbidity current, right? So it's, it's much more famous. Uh, so uh, is it have a uh, what was like a pengaruh? What is it? The influence? <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh -huh. uh, to the maybe petroleum system or uh, something like. Oh that. yes. Yes, so if you look at the, let me show you. Uh, if you look at my uh, slide about the application in petroleum, uh, just a moment, this one. So, <clears throat> at least in this area here where these uh, turbidite uh, system are are working, uh, you will have uh, you will have uh, in the turbidite system itself. It's mostly a reservoir because it's bring a sandy deposit, right? And then uh, this uh, sandy deposit in the turbidite uh, system uh, is, is as acting as a reservoir. While uh, since we are in the deep boiling uh, area, we are also we also have a fine grain material, the suspension things. Uh, let them become a shell that can be a uh, seal and also can be a uh, source rock for, 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 for the petroleum system. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mas. Uh, You're welcome, Pat. Yeah. Yeah, the third question uh, coming from Mas Erlangga. Mas Erlangga, uh, you might turn on your audio. Oh, Pak, belum kedengaran, Pak. Pak Erlangga still mute. Yeah, okay, mute. mute. Sorry, yeah, okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Different, different button. Okay, uh, thank you, Mas Diki. Hello, Mas Erlangga. Very impressive presentation, first of all. Thank you, Mas. Uh, I see that you have a wide range of coverage of data from northern to southern hemisphere. So yes. from Hawaii, New Zealand, Indonesia, uh, Middle East, Brazil, and etc. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering if you ever find the effect of uh, Coriolis. Uh, so Coriolis is a rotation effect mm -hmm. to inertial force. It is caused by the earth rotation. So in example, a river will tend to have a more tendency to flow clockwise in northern hemisphere mm -hmm. or clockwise in southern hemisphere. Yeah. Uh, when this, they discharge in open, open, open sea or open water, so mm -hmm. I wonder if it is also work in the same way in the deep sea, and uh, in some way is uh, preserved in the older deposit, <clears throat> in the levee, uh, levee channels or the uh, contourite deposits. I'm just thinking, is it a might or a reality? Maybe yeah. that question. Yeah, thank you, Pailanga. Uh There is a uh, two. Uh, school of thought about this part actually. <laughs> one is uh, by um, Zoltan Sylvester at UT Austin, and one is by uh, Jeffrey Pickle at University of Leeds. They they argue that uh, they have a different opinion about this. And uh, Zoltan Sil uh, Zoltan Sylvester actually there is a special publication at SEPM and uh, IIS about this. And then uh, Zoltan thought that uh, there is there is no influence about uh, this Coriolis effect in the deep marine uh, channel. 
Uh, but uh, Jeffrey Pickle from Leeds said that there is influence about this Coriolis effect uh, that influencing the deep marine channel system. So there is a two 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 school of thoughts actually, but tentang uh, about this. But uh, uh, in uh, based on my based on my uh, uh, work, uh, that work I'm working in the Barents Sea in the north, so in the New Zealand in the south, I couldn't see any effect of this. Yeah, me myself, to be honest, I never saw the effect of Coriolis in deep water, but uh, some of my professor do. And they said that uh, in, in some deposits, uh, the levee is tend to be like asymmetric. So it's mm. in the left hand side or right hand side or something like that. But uh, me myself never, but yeah, you, you have a, a lot of data, so I'm thinking if you have. Uh, I think I think what uh, if you if you remember my uh, slides from uh, Brazil, I think uh, Henry Posamenter is right. So we need to look at uh, more more data to be able to to solve this uh, challenge. But I think I mean I uh, my my if you look at my data is uh, quite spotted, right? I mean I'm I'm not, I'm not working in the bigger area, so it's, it's spotted in the north and in the south. So maybe I miss uh, I miss uh, uh, your your professor uh, finding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Okay, thank you, Mas Erlangga. Question from uh, Mas Jianudin. You might turn on your audio to deliver your question. Mas Jianudin. Mas Jianudin. Uh, um, leave the meeting already or? I think he already left, yeah. I left the meeting already. Yeah. Okay. But there, there is another questioner from from Mr. Ridlo, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, to Mas Ridlo, you might turn on your audio, please. Uh, okay. Thank you for the time. Uh, good uh, evening, Mr. Diki. I'm from oh, UPN, uh, Geological Engineering Batch 2019. Uh, I have some question about uh, uh, I want to know uh, is gully erosion uh, have an impact to the deep marine sediment load and uh, is it actively eroded if it is actively eroded uh, what controlling factor that uh, that make it and the second question is is gully erosion still associated with turbidity current system? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Master Do. So the first question is, uh, if the gully erosion and the deep marine is related to sediment load, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at the, I can show you. Example. Here you go. So, if you look at this uh, example, the gully is also located in the self edge. I mean, it's a similar like a canyon, right? But why in the canyon you will have a very wide uh, width and uh, V shape until U shape from proximal to the distal, but why in the gully uh, you only have a, I could say tiny uh, uh, width uh, with not uh, deeper area here. And uh, uh, remember also, uh, since we are in the, in, the, in the deep marine, we need to have uh, a sediment uh, source from uh, self area to be able to, 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 to to make uh, these uh, things right, so so the the the, the problem here is that uh, this gully erosion is uh, was mostly is because of you is eroded by the sediment. It's the same with the canyon 
or channel is also eroded by the sediment uh, between gully and the canyon is that in the gully uh, you don't have uh, uh, so much uh, sediment transported from the terrestrial to the self uh, and also in this gully system is uh, mostly you mostly the, the most influence factor is the longshore drift current on the shelf so uh, I think I have uh, one example from my case here so in this case oh wait. yeah here you go so in this case uh, you see this uh, gully is quite uh, bended right here yeah and then this this gully is different with other because then you have a long shore drift uh, in this uh, direction here so that's why uh, you have uh, this this uh, uh, bandit here and uh, next question if it is effectively eroded and uh, what is the influence factor controlling factor controlling factor yeah uh, I, uh, what do you mean by effectively i mean because as long as you don't have a uh, sediment you in this gully system the it's quite uh, difficult to 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 erode it this 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 this, this uh, to make an erosion on this system so you need to have a, a sediment uh, from uh, terrestrial from the shelf but then if your if your um, uh, sediment uh, directly to the uh, what's it called uh, entry point of the sediment conduits then you will make a canyon like uh, like here. So in this case, uh, the canyon is connected to this uh, south uh, south edge delta uh, channels in the south edge delta. It means that there is always a sediment transported from the terrestrial to the self, which is the, using these uh, channels in south edge delta, and to the canyon. And in this case, the possibility to have gully is very less. But then. Uh, in uh, in this case, you don't need to have uh, a sediment conduit uh, from on the, on the shelf because because then you need to have a calm environment. What you can what you can do is to have this uh, longshore drift to transfer from the sediment entry point that far from this area, and then this longshore drift will create an erosion on the gully. And the uh, last one, gully erosion. Uh, is that associated with turbidity current system? Oh, uh, I think I just, I, mean, I have an answer here. I go, yeah. So based on the, uh, I don't so if you look at this, uh, this is from uh, Dodic Stone, 1985. So most of this, uh, this gully is... Uh, so mostly this uh, gully is uh, affected by this, uh, what's called as a grain flow. Because also, uh, and then this uh, grain flow is coming from this, uh, so you have a longshore uh, drift current uh, in this parallel to the selfage. And then after that, you have the grain flow. So the turbidity current is uh, is quite less in this uh, gully system, I could say. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh, thank you. And next next question from Alam Shah here. Yeah? <clears throat> Pak Alam Shah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh. Sorry, moderator. Can we speak in Indonesia? Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, you can speak in Indonesia. Selamat sore, Mas Diki. Halo, Pak. Selamat sore, Pak. Uh, saya ada dua pertanyaan ini. Uh, yang pertama uh, terkait dengan data seismik ya. Ya. Yeah. Bagaimana caranya kita bisa membedakan uh, lingkungan lendapan yang dari vulkanik sama yang karbonat kalau di seismik itu karena kan pengalaman uh, kita pernah dengar itu ada pemboran yang gagal di Selat Makassar gara-gara itu gitu ya uh, nah itu apakah ada tips triknya cara membedakannya mungkin kalau di karbonat ya ada kelihatan lah kayak rival atau pinnacle atau apa tapi kadang ada juga yang nggak kelihatan gitu nah terus yang kedua 
dari contoh-contoh yang Mas Diki berikan tadi uh, tentang pola seismiknya, terus tentang uh, patternnya seperti apa yang ada di situ seperti gali, terus uh, turbidai dan sebagainya, um, bisa nggak di uh, dari semua contoh itu kalau seandainya itu jadi suatu reservoir uh, masuk dalam kategori petroleum system dan menjadi reservoir, kira-kira Uh, dari yang the best sampai yang the poor reservoir quality itu apa aja, Mas? Ya. Oke, okay, itu ya. Terima kasih. Ya. Terima kasih, Pak Alamsyah. Uh, kalau dari seismik ya, untuk uh, volcanic sama karbonat, lagi-lagi itu balik ke uh, seismic facies method, seismic facies analisisnya Peter Fell yang Mas Tujuh itu. Jadi kita harus ngeli, uh, perbedaannya adalah di reflection termination, reflection configuration, sama di external forms-nya, Pak. Jadi kalau misalkan di volcanic, misalkan kita bicara dike ya, dike, misalkan dike. Uh, Oke, okay. pertama sih, uh, awal, uh, pertama, uh, apa, volcanic sama karbonat, karena dia punya uh, high velocity and high density, uh, dia akan ngasih uh, respons yang high, apa, uh, bright amplitude. Jadi dari, dari dari segi nilai amplitude rata-rata tuh sama antara antara volcanic sama karbonat. Karbonat kalau misalkan dia sempat expose mungkin akan lebih ngasilin low amplitude ya. Tapi dari segi dari segi apa rata-rata sih rata-rata sama dan juga biasanya dia chaotic dua-duanya. Jadi kesamaannya itu. Perbedaannya adalah di reflection termination, reflection configuration sama di external form. Kalau misalkan di uh, volcanic, contohnya uh, kalau misalkan dia batolit gitu sih udah ketahuan, maksudnya dia akan bentuknya kayak tadi yang di kora volcano itu kan apa ada kayak magma chamber gitu udah kelihatan bentuknya seperti itu. Terus uh, uh, apa namanya kalau misalkan dia dive gitu ya, uh, dia pasti kan akan memotong perlapisan ya, jadi uh, dia akan uh, intrudit. Uh, intruded sedimentary layers dan itu juga uh, di intrusion effectnya tuh bisa kelihatan di uh, seismic. Tapi lagi-lagi ini kembali ke resolusi ya Pak. Artinya kalau misalkan resolusinya kecil dia nggak keres nggak akan ke image sama seismic. Tapi anggapan kita ini skalanya besar jadi bisa ke resolve sama seismic. Jadi intruded effectnya itu juga akan kelihatan di uh, di apa namanya di seismic datanya. Dan juga juga dan juga kalau misalkan uh, si dike tadi kan uh, apa namanya dia uh, akan menghasilkan uh, amplitude yang uh, lebih bright daripada sedimentary layers. Kalau karbonat uh, perbedaannya adalah kalau misalnya kita bicara reef ya, kalau karbonat plastik agak susah karena dia kan berfungsi sebagai matriks dari dari uh, sandstone-nya jadi Uh, itu kita bisa agak susah kalau untuk pembedainya. Tapi misalkan dia platform gitu, karbonat platform gitu, itu akan terlihat dari kenampakan, pertama dari reflection uh, pattern ya. Peter, apa, di bukunya Peter Fell ini, ini, dia bilang kalau misalkan ada yang namanya uh, uh, mounded. Nah si mounded ini, biasanya kan kalau misalkan kita lihat reef kan itu kan, dia tumbuhnya kan uh, apa namanya ngikutin si level ya so, si level fluctuation artinya juga nanti uh, lateral temporal uh, morfologinya juga bisa bisa kelihatan dari 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 seismik terus yang reflection configuration juga uh, uh, apa namanya bisa 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 beda dari karbonat sama volcanic dan yang terakhir tuh external formnya external form itu artinya uh, bentukan 3D Three dimensi ini juga berbeda. Nah, kayak misalkan dike sama reef, kalau dike umumnya memanjang, terus dia memotong perlapisan, sedangkan kalau yang reef itu kan dia kayak pohon cemara gitu kan. Jadi, jadi beda pak. Dan uh, sebenarnya sih uh, kita nggak kita sebagai seismic interpreter nggak bisa stand alone juga karena kita juga harus lihat data-data. Ini kalau saya keluar dari topik seismik ya, kalau dalam dalam menjawab pertanyaan. Alam saya ini kalau misalkan ada data yang lain kita juga harus lihat data yang lain kayak misalkan contohnya grafiti sama magnetik itu nanti juga artinya tetap dengan si grafiti magnetik itu juga akan ngasih respon yang berbeda terhadap interpretasi kita 
untuk ngebedain volcanic sama karbonat ini. Uh, turbidite itu ada pengaruh. Oh ini apa kualitinya ya Pak ya? Kualiti ya, turbidite. Kualiti reservoir dari ya, yang contoh-contoh Mas Diki berikan tadi, seandainya ya. masuk dalam kategori petroleum system ya bagian dari petroleum system. Kira-kira Kalau, the best quality-nya itu yang mana sama yang poor quality itu yang mana? Apakah turbidite atau gali atau apa gitu urutannya gitu mas biar biar. Oh, kalau untuk petroleum sistem mungkin agak pan, agak kompleks nih pak kita ngomongin karena kan ada source rock migration, trapping mechanism, seal reservoir. Mungkin kita uh, sempitin ke reservoir eh, aja. Betul betul ke reservoir kualitinya mas. Oh, Jadi, okay. ya, kalau, ya, mungkin, dari dari mungkin, contoh-contoh tadi itu gimana urutannya? Oh ya yeah. kalau untuk reservoir quality at least kita akan bicara uh, reservoir kualitas itu kan kita akan bicara dengan porositas ya porositas itu kita akan bicara dengan emas Aduh, ini jadi belajar apa masuk ke sedimentologi nih mohon maaf jadi jadi si ke di, ke di mana sih kemas yang yang paling bagus gitu ya uh, kalau tadi uh, pak Alfred lihat uh, proses uh, turbidity flow yang di laboratorium itu kita kan punya apa head ada ada body ada tail gitu ya nah pada umumnya memang si itu kan akan tersortasi dengan baik di uh, bagian akhir ya pak karena kan dia akan jadi semakin uh, bagus ya nah itu pada paling bagus itu adalah uh, sabar uh, sabarin ch- uh, channel sama fan terutama di di, di bagian uh, distal gitu ya Uh, karena umumnya grand size-nya juga akan 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 berkurang uh, ke arah basin floor kan. Jadi yang pertama itu uh, sabarin channel sama sabarin fan. Terus mungkin kalau yang kedua itu uh, contourite juga sekarang udah mulai udah mulai dikejar karena juga itu juga dia punya kemas yang bagus karena si bottom current itu juga membuat uh, kemasnya sortasinya juga jadi semakin bagus. Jadi pertama submarine channel, submarine fan, uh, contourite. Kendala dengan canyon itu adalah rata-rata ya Pak, kalau uh, canyon di dunia itu tuh terbentuk pada saat dia uh, low stand system track. Jadi kalau misalkan uh, ada sih yang 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 di high stand sama di transgresif, tapi umumnya itu pada saat low stand. Nah, rata-rata setelah low stand itu tuh didominasi dengan Uh, high stand atau transgressive system jadi uh, canyon feel-nya yang yang harusnya jadi reservoir itu banyak keisi sama uh, uh, fine grain material dari dari transgressive atau high stand deposit jadi artinya secara porositas dan permeabilitas itu kurang bagus kalau di canyon. Nah yang tra yang kalau guli kita punya masalah di dimensinya karena guli itu kalau tadi Pak saya lihat di proskol saya juga width-nya tuh nggak terlalu nggak terlalu besar gitu loh dan juga eh, apa namanya feeling deposit dari si guri itu juga sama tadi kayak si canyon tadi karena dia posisinya di di self edge kan yang terakhir mungkin eh, ah mas transport deposit juga eh, itu juga bervariasi ya ininya mungkin kalau yang di mas transport deposit yang bagian-bagian depan itu mungkin kita bisa dapat Uh, kom- apa kemas yang bagus ya karena kalau di bagian proksima kan border border gitu kan jadinya membuat uh, kemas kurang kurang bagus demikian pak Alamsa oke okay, mas Diki terima kasih ini bisa menambah referensi saya nanti terima kasih terima kasih mas Alamsa next question yeah. ya last question from Anif ya yeah. uh, oke okay. uh, mas Diki thank you for the presentation very very nice presentation uh, one more last question from me sorry for me late Uh, in your slides just now, I saw some trust features. Uh, these features are uh, usually uh, related to high sedimentation uh, loading or be related to some tectonic compression events uh, based on your uh, experience, uh, how do they occur. And uh, the components of them, are they very hard and liquefied? Uh, so uh, if there are some strong uh, mass transport deposits, can they just um, Uh, impede these uh, trust features and um, uh, result in uh, destroying or penetrating them. So could you answer those uh, queries? So sorry, sorry for the first one, you said you asked about the trust. 
still could be done. Yeah, in some of your slides uh, just now, there are some features that I see uh, labeled as trust. So, uh, uh, these features are related to seismic compression, uh, so related to events or uh, high sedimentation uh, loading that relates to some uh, shell dye phase or something. Okay, trust. It's uh, kind of like uh, anticlinal trust features. Anticline trust features. Oh, do I have it? Uh, Anticline trust feature. Do you do you don't know which slide? I don't. I can't remember already which slide. Trust. I didn't. Uh, did I mention about trust? Uh, no, I don't think I mentioned about the uh, trust. Uh, it's okay then. It's okay if, if it's not there. It's okay. No, I, I don't. I think I don't mention about the trust thing. If if it is MTD, you might have some trust, but it's a trust thing not because of the tectonic, but it's it's, it's because of the MTD itself. That's. I think I, I, if I can rec only recognize the word trust in my slides, I think it can come from the MTD. Okay. okay. And then your next question, can you repeat again? Uh, yeah, it's still related to the trust. So if uh, you're talking about the uh, trust features uh, created by these MTDs, uh, mm -hmm sequence uh, flows, do they uh, provide like a confined spaces for the turbidites or they, the the itself is very tough? That is yeah. yeah, when uh, when you have a truss, then you will create a, a, like a ridge in Palio, in the, in the bathymetry, right? And then for sure it, it can create a barrier for, for the turbidite. Yes. For sure. Okay, that's all. Okay, I think that's the last question, yeah. We, we should breaking the fast time. This is already 6 p.m. in Indonesia, yeah, Jakarta. Uh, thank you, Mas Diki, for the excellent presentation. Very wide coverage. Yeah, and we have Ofosi want to express our thank you. We wish you the best for your PhD. Okay, and all the best for your uh, your study yeah, and for your yeah, next plan. Yeah. Okay, I uh, will give the time to Melinda to close the session. No, I just want to close. Yeah, thank you, Mas Riki, and to Mas Diki as well. To all participants, thank you very much to spare your time. And to Mas Diki, uh, good luck for your PhD and see you in another occasion. Uh, maybe later on the slides, if possible to share, we share to participants as well. And uh, see you in another occasion. To all participants, thank you very much. Uh, still uh, tune on to the 4C Instagram for the info. And last but not least, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Thank you, Mas Diki. Yeah. Yeah. Ini recordingnya saya stop ya, Mas ya? Siap, siap. Oke, okay, thank you.